Your doctor has recommended that you undergo a balloon angioplasty with a stent implant. But what does that actually mean? The heart is located in the center of the chest. Its job is to keep blood continually circulating throughout the body. The blood vessels that supply the body with oxygen-rich blood are called arteries. The arteries that supply blood to the heart muscle itself are called coronary arteries. Sometimes these blood vessels can narrow or become blocked by plaque deposits, restricting normal blood flow. In simple terms, a balloon angioplasty with stent insertion is a procedure used to increase the amount of blood flowing through the coronary artery. During a balloon angioplasty, a heart specialist will insert a thin tube into the artery in your arm or leg and gently guide it towards the problem area in your heart. Once the tube is in place, a small balloon is briefly inflated in order to widen the narrowed artery. A short length of mesh tubing, called a stent, is then inserted into the newly widened artery. During and after the procedure, your doctor will take x-rays in order to monitor your progress. In some cases, patients will decide not to have a balloon angioplasty simply out of fear. It's important, however, to understand that balloon angioplasty is one of the safest and most non-intrusive methods of improving the health of your heart. Choosing not to have a balloon angioplasty and stent insertion may put your health at risk. The symptoms you're having may be warning signs of a serious and even life-threatening medical problem. For that reason, you should carefully consider the value of your doctor's recommendation to undergo balloon angioplasty with a stent implant. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth, and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. To begin, your leg and groin are swabbed with an antiseptic solution. Then the doctor will make a small cut over the femoral artery in the upper part of the leg. A special needle is then inserted into the artery itself. Then a guide wire is carefully passed through the needle and gently pushed into the artery and upwards towards your chest. A narrow tube, called a catheter, is threaded along the wire until it too has reached the coronary artery. Next, the doctor uses the catheter to inject a harmless dye into the artery itself. The dye shows up on a TV monitor and is used to pinpoint the exact location of the blocked area. Once the restricted area has been identified, a thin wire is inserted into the catheter and is guided all the way to the blocked area and then slightly beyond. This wire acts as a guide for the balloon catheter. It allows your doctor to position the deflated balloon precisely in the middle of the narrowest part of the coronary artery. The balloon is briefly inflated. As it expands, it squeezes the plaque deposits against the wall of the artery. It also stretches the artery wall and enlarges the channel through which blood flows. Your doctor will continue to inflate and deflate the balloon until normal blood flow has been restored. The balloon catheter is then withdrawn and another balloon catheter is inserted. This balloon has the mesh stent tube wrapped around it. Once this tube has been placed in the center of the now widened area of the artery, 
the balloon is briefly inflated. The stent expands until it hugs the walls of the artery. Finally, after a thorough investigation of the region, the catheter and guide wire are withdrawn. And the stent remains permanently to provide support to the artery and to resist the buildup of plaque. The dye that had been injected will break up and leave your body as waste. Slight pressure is applied to the incision in your leg in order to prevent bleeding. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan. Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, Try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from 1 to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process.